been a while since I did a um, tour of the garden, but I just felt like, um, I don't know, sometimes I just feel like people don't want to see all that, but um, the more that I watch other people's tours, the more that I realize, like, hey, I really like to see all that. So we're just going to do a quick tour and um, talk about, like, what's going on and what's new. So we'll start on this end. Um, I had some uh, downy mildew going on with the squash and zucchini. And I was going to give up on them. I was going to pull them out. I was going to just start all over. I even planted the seeds already. Okay, so um, I sprayed them down with neem oil and I clipped all of the damaged leaves. All right, and I'll show you what those damaged leaves look like in the picture there. Um, but they have recovered. They have fully recovered. I don't see any signs of the downy mildew. Downy mildew is not the same as powdery mildew, okay? So um, although they have a similar name, they are not the same. Um, downy mildew is more of a water um, fungus-like organism, but powdery mildew is an actual fungus. So the downy mildew lives in the water that uh, sits on your leaves. So I do have a couple leaves down here that I can probably show you. Okay, so down here I see some leaves that have some damage on them. These spots are signs of downy mildew and they look like rust spots almost. Okay, um, basically, it's not a fungus, but it's a fungus-like organism, okay? It's not the same as powdery mildew. Although they sound the same, they are not the same. Powdery mildew is actually a fungus, and downy mildew is a fungus-like organism that lives in the water, that sits on your leaves and it is really humid here and it's gonna be really humid here for a few days so I am gonna have to treat these and keep an eye on them uh, with the neem oil um, back here we have still some collard greens and I have been neglecting the collard greens I I mean I water them and I feed them but uh, they have really taken some damage and basically what I've been doing is just clipping off the damaged leaves and just letting it grow back. This is the issue with the damaged leaves here. This is the culprit. If I can get that. So I need to come out and spray. We're not supposed to get any rain for a little while. So I will have to come out and spray. Um... Back here, I do have sweet million tomatoes and they are blushing. Look at that, there's two of them over there. I definitely need to come out here with this neem oil. See, neem, <clears throat> neem oil is good at all stages of an insect's life. Um, so that's why I like to use neem oil and it's organic. All right, down here I have some tumbling toms, and they are almost ready, looking good. I still have green beans coming on. These are the bush beans. Um, they have also taken on a lot of damage, and I believe it is the Japanese beetle that is doing the damage on these. Uh, these are also sweet millions. These tall ones here, these are all sweet millions. Um, these are super bush. These ones, these bigger ones are super bush. Um, then I have this spaghetti squash. 
two of those. This one's a, also a spaghetti squash here. Spaghetti squash and spaghetti squash. And then I have two collard greens here. And then we still have kale. This kale is really looking sad. And I probably would just take it out because I've already started more kale for the fall. But collard greens also looking really bad over here. Like I said, I kind of just gave up on those. And then there's a huge weed in there. Ugh. Huge weed. Um, peppers. There are these sweet peppers in here. Those are the um, Melrose sweet peppers. More Swiss chard. Now the Swiss chard has been doing really good. I have been harvesting that and it has been doing fine. So um, these are more tumbling toms. This is uh, Russian, red Russian kale. I've been harvesting that. More collard greens and more tumbling toms. I really thought these were not going to do anything for me. And they surprised me. They did surprise me. They have been producing. Well, they started to produce, I guess you could say. Over here, I have six tomato plants. These first two on this side are Celebrity. These two in the middle here are Beef Master. And then the two on the end are Super Bush. And then I do have another Tumbling Tom right over there. In between there is some Swiss chard. I did have some lettuce in there, but I let the lettuce go. When it, Once it started to get bitter, I just didn't take care of it anymore. I tried to plant carrots in between here, but I think it was just too hot for carrots. So I'm just now seeing a little bit of leafage, foliage, little greens coming in. But I don't know. Maybe they'll do something. Maybe they won't. These bottles have been in here for a week. And they are not empty yet. Two in the back are really like halfway full. This one always empties first. And I don't know why. It's, I think it's got to do with the soil. This soil over here might be a lot looser than the soil right here. And that's probably why it can come out. There's only two tiny little holes in those spikes. So these two here are beef masters. So these are indeterminate tomatoes. Beef masters are indeterminate, which means they will, there's no determined size or height or production. They just will keep producing and growing if you let them, if you take care of them. These are all super bush here in these containers are all super bush and they are not indeterminate. They are determinant, which means they will produce and then that will be it for them. Um, down in there, I did plant some cilantro, and I can see it's just now starting to come out. That lettuce back there, like I said, once it got bitter, I just let it go. These two tomato plants here are more celebrity tomatoes. I heard a lot of good things about celebrity tomatoes, so I decided to try to grow them. I had planted beets in between there, and they didn't do so well might have been too hot at that time but I did go ahead and start this pot here with beets in it and it's doing fine uh, more tumbling toms in here which are doing amazing there's lots of little green tomatoes on there I know there's always pollinators in here so I'm expecting a lot of little tomatoes on on these plants here and these are my straight eight cucumbers I can see like one little tiny cucumber there. I wonder if it's going to be mature. But I did get these straight eights in. And they are going all the way up, reaching the top of that DIY trellis that I did for the pole beans and the straight eights to climb. Um, these little flowers have been really amazing. <clears throat> They have really lasted a long time. I'm really pleased with those little flowers. And they're really cute and small. And they don't take up a lot of space. And they're beautiful. They're vibrant. They draw in lots of pollinators. 
I've got jalapenos back there. Those I was worried about in the beginning because they were such scrawny little plants, but they really bounced bounced back. Patty pan squash is doing amazing. Look at these leaves. They're just beautiful. Beautiful. Down in here, you can see got little squashes coming on. Yep. This is a better angle. Little patty pan squashes coming on. And then the back there, there's lots of flowers on that one. Lots of flowers. And then already a squash. This one's already producing squash. And my other ones, my zucchini and my yellow squash, have not. So that's something to note. Um, yeah, there's two, two plants in this bucket and then one plant in the back there. So I have three patty pan squash there. Uh, these are more of the sweet, the Melrose peppers. This was my first, these plants were the first to produce peppers and they have, they are loaded with peppers. So that is something to note. I'm going to grow those again next year. The Melrose peppers. This is my, um, it's one of the bell peppers. I think it's a red bell pepper. I know the one in the back there is a red bell pepper. And this is a volunteer tomato. It is <laughs> so super strong. Look at the stem, the growing stem on this. I'm not going to bother with it. I'm not going to prune it. I'm not going to take care of it. I'm just going to let it do its thing. It's got flowers on it. So I don't even know what kind of tomato it is. We'll just have to wait and see. I got more of those little flowers in there. Uh, these bell peppers have not really been doing much. So I don't know. Maybe they're just slow starters. But I have been reading in a lot of posts that people have been having issues with their peppers being slow. Whole beans are totally taken off. Like they are reaching all the way to the top already. Good to see. Oh, look at this guy. Ah, these guys are going to be the death of me. I have to get the can. Yeah, I have a coffee container over there that I just... I just pluck them off and let them fall into there. But peppers, there's peppers in there. I just don't know if they're going to be, you know, a good size. But we'll see. I do have some peppers back in there too. So this is my spineless, my Clemson spineless okra. It's got some Japanese beetle damage. This is my red burgundy okra. I'm growing okra for the first time this year. I've never grown okra. I don't even know if I really like okra. I mean, I've had it fried and it was good, so it's probably how I'll just I'll just make it fried. I have an air fryer, so well, that'll be a good thing to throw in the air fryer. These are my market more cucumbers here this bucket here has market more cucumbers i'm not really telling the difference um they're all kind of coming out the same these are burpless cucumbers both of these are burpless cucumbers and then this is the market more cucumber but I mean, of all the cucumbers I've harvested, they all kind of look the same. They're all, like, long and slender. I thought the market more was a little bit fatter of a cucumber, but I guess, I don't know, I guess I was wrong. But I am getting lots of cucumbers. I've harvested some. There's more here in the back. There's a couple growing, if you can see them. Yep, down here I have one. So they've, they've been producing, and they are also all the way up to the top, and I'm going to train them to go this way. So, 
hopefully that'll work out. Sugar Baby Watermelons. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. I did come out and support a couple of those. Um, like this one here. I came and put a support on that one. And I put a support on the one that's down there. I need to get a support on this one here. This one looks a little misshapen, but we're going to let it go. That one looks good. And then I see that I have more coming on. This one here is going to be a, a watermelon. And I know they're getting pollinated because the pollinators are in here all the time. All the time. Like, always. I can always find pollinators. There's another one there. So, Sugar Baby is definitely doing good. The Moon and Stars has taken off. They're all the, climbing all the way up here now. You can see they climb from the pot. And they're all the way up there now. So they're doing good. This is my young blackberry. I bought this blackberry before I got that blackberry. Because I didn't think this one was going to make it. And it bounced back. So it's pretty resilient. The raspberry... You can see all kinds of little buds on there. So we might get some raspberries. Blackberries looking like they're budding too. Blueberries. This is my blueberry bush. I don't expect to get blueberries this year. Especially because we've already been to the farm to pick blueberries. So I think blueberry season is over just about so this is probably a next year plant but it is looking good so that's that this is my strawberry bed and it looks like I have a couple maybe a couple strawberries they don't look very good though they look like they got some damage on them this one looks like it might have a couple more soon. This had so many weeds in there. I had to get all those weeds out. These two plants I bought this year. So I didn't expect any strawberries from those plants. But um, I do have a lot of foliage. And they probably will produce a, a lot of runners. But the plan is to open this bed up. I'm going to um, expand it. I'm going to expand it, and it's going to go all the way from, I guess, where it's at now. I'm not sure, but where it's at now, all the way to wherever I decide the walkway is going to end. So this whole bed will go all the way down, and it'll be all strawberries. That's the plan for right now. Things change, and I always change my mind, but... I was going to do a bed with these cinder blocks and then I changed my mind about that because I changed my mind about the strawberry and I just changed my mind about the whole layout of the garden. I still have this tarp down because I'm still killing grass. So um, eventually all of this area will be covered with wood chips and I did some weeding back here behind this bush I chopped it and trimmed it all down and got all the weeds out from around there that's what I got that pile there I just left it out there to die so I could use it in the compost um, but then I laid out all this cardboard here to, and I'm you know just hold, weighting it down with those cinder blocks the compost pile is in the back I don't know if I ever showed you guys that but that's the compost pile in the back, and then it's kind of where I just throw materials and things. This is more cardboard that I have to break down and, and lay down. Compost pile. It's not very big because I've been using my kitchen scraps. Um, I've been burying them. So when I make my banana tea, I, I pour that into the compost but I did have a, an experiment here. 
So I had did an experiment here where I buried some kitchen scraps and I'm going to do a video on that when I get ready. I also did a separate one in that little bucket there, but um, we'll, we'll take a look at that on another video. So yeah, look at all these cucumbers. Nice. Oh, this little guy here. Get out. Get out. I didn't realize they pollinated. But they do more damage than good, so I have enough pollinators. And that's it. That's all I have going on right now. I actually have another thing going on. And that is this. I got a delivery the other day. I'm so excited about these wood chips. And then there's, there's some branches in there, but I have a wood chipper. I can go ahead and throw those in. <clears throat> but I'm so excited I can finally finish all of this area. Yes. Winning. So that's all I have for today, guys. I just wanted to give you a quick tour. Let's see what was going on. I, I haven't done that in a while. So, um, yeah. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please give it a thumbs up and subscribe. And until next time, the more you know, the more you grow. Bye, guys.